It says we're live. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, I don't see it. If I go to here, live showcase, seven people. A whopping seven people. Oh, Queen Cats. Okay, well, it's not showing up on chat yet, but it uh, looks like it is working, right? Yep, okay, it's me looking at my phone. Hello, everybody. What is going on? Pocketbook, yes. Uh, we're going to let some people filter in just a wee bit before we continue on because, um, well, you know, it's better to show you guys this product to the masses but hello welcome 2020 2020 2022 we are here and we are ready to go for another full year of awesomeness hack academicus hackademicus cool greetings from brazil hello oh no not hola i don't know portuguese it's probably still Ola. Ola. Queen Cats, hello. Christian Folio. Oh, that's a French name and a half. Very nice. Matthew Valadez. Hey, Krishna Chitana Sataru. Hello, Peter. What is going on, everybody? We're here for a brand new, not a brand new, it's fairly new. It's Pocketbook's newest possible unit as well, which is, let me get a control of the situation here. We'll do a top down for you guys. How do you scroll left and right? Okay, perfect. Here we are. Do, 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 do. This is the Pocketbook Ink Pad Lite. This is built from the ground up, and it is a 9.7 inch screen. The rare thing about that is that almost no one uses 9.7 inch screens anymore. Uh, the Kindle DX used it, which came and went three times. It's now gone. And the Hanvon 9701 Smart Office uses that, but that's Chinese only. There are no devices on the market that use 9.7, and that's pretty spectacular, honestly, because they didn't just go into the bargain bin of their previous products. Uh, no discredit to them, but when you have things like the Basic Lux, the Touch Lux, the Base, the Touch HD 3, um, the basic and they're all six inches and they all have the same body. So they, they just kind of swap uh, the aqua. They just swap things in and out. Whereas this one was actually built from the ground up and it's completely clean on almost all sides. And how they do that is because they actually put all of the buttons on thumbnail buttons here. So you get a power button, you get a more button. Actually, that's a home button. And you get a left and right page turn, which can also be used on this side. They're also following the whole landscape is better kind of thing that literally everyone is doing. Since 2020, mid, 2000, 2000 yeah, about 2020, everyone's been putting their logos sideways. Everyone's been doing that. Uh, Remarkable does that. Uh, Onyx does that. Everyone's uh, iReader does that. Kobo does that. Everyone's been putting their logos horizontal like this to encourage more landscape viewing and show that their device can be uh, flipped and swiveled and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's um, that's basically why they do that. But this thing is great because if I know, again, it's, it's hard to buy these. And that's why we do this is because you can't go into a store and buy this. We understand that. So if you were to grab one of these, it is about this big. And comparing that to a regular flagship smartphone, if we just hold that up to a human being, it's looking like this. So it is a fairly large e-reader. 9.7 is kind of a sweet spot for e-readers that we don't see almost ever. We never see this screen size. As I said a couple minutes ago, only two devices two devices in recent history have used 9.7 in any sort of um, uh, official capacity. I mean, there's like, you know, no-name white label garbage devices like the Icarus that was using a 9.7 based off of a really old Onyx. But anyways, for the most part, in the modern age, no one uses 9.7. You, you won't find it. You can get the Hanvon Smart Office, but that's about it. Stephen Prosser's back in action. Hello. And Michael Kalawowski. No idea who that guy is. I'm just kidding. Hey, Mike, you're here too. That is fantastic. So how do you turn this on? Because there, nothing's on the sides of the device. Well, you press and hold the power button, which is very... Weird to be on a front of a device. Kobo and uh, Tolino put it on the back. Everyone puts it on the side. Uh, as it stands right now, I'm trying to think just out loud. I can't think of a device that puts a power button on the front. 
unless you guys can correct me. But just cycling through my head, I can't think of one company that's done that. Um, I guess, like, kind of technically the Mira monitor has that little square, but you don't really need to turn it on. But, yeah. Uh, Tiger Blue Eyes, hello as well. Everyone is rocking and rolling here. So this is a good screen size. I think this is really solid. And it's it's cheaper than a 10.3 for the most part. I think this thing is within the $300 range. And I'm just going to double confirm on that. Just so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think the... Pocketbook Inkpad Lite, yeah, it's two seventy nine, and for a large screen unit, that's not bad. And we understand, you know, two hundred seventy nine dollars is a lot for some people, and I get that. It's it's a lot of money, but comparing it against everything else in the industry, when you have nine hundred dollar, you know, mega tablets, you have two thousand uh, dollar music note readers, and you have you know just the average five hundred dollar US. Um, uh, note taker. So it's it's really it's it's really rare, honestly, to find something that is only two hundred seventy nine dollars. And you know, in today's money, that's honestly not that bad. Uh, Tiger Blue Eyes cost, yes, as I said, is two hundred seventy nine dollars for this. So two hundred eighty dollars, call it, and it's yours, and that's not bad. Stephen Prosser, Top Joy. We're gonna be talking about Top Joy in a little bit. Uh, Steven, uh, more towards the end, because we'll just kind of go over this first. Does the power button also work as the home button, says Krishna? No, because the home button is here on the bottom. You have power, page turn right or left, depending on which way you hold the device, page turn left, and then home. So if I were to go to apps here, and I can go home. Now, one of the biggest questions we have on the act, not on the chat here today, but on the uh, video itself is note taking, because as you know, or if you've ever seen our videos, pocketbook ever since 2019 has been maybe 2020 has been really pushing sketching and stuff so much so that they have their own dedicated app called scribble now unfortunately i'm gonna grab my um goody reader coffee mug here oh i didn't crack open a coffee yet that's right what we got okay well i can't get anything hot now so i'm gonna have to go for my stash this is a boss coffee by suntory no we're not sponsored by them but it's good in a pinch if you don't have any coffee Ah, that's great. All right. Back to the show. <laughs> so you do have note taking, but you can't use a regular stylus. Why? Because this isn't a $500 uh, Wacom tablet. So it just will not work. You have to use these things, which it's a very divisive stylus. It's love it or hate it. People love that the fact that these are available for their unit, but they hate that Comparing to a Wacom stylus, it's not very good because why? Well, it's not very good. In fact, these styli are uh, use case. How do you say it? Like it's um, when you don't have another choice. Oh, well, I just touched the screen a bunch of times because it's not very good. It's very spongy and it's like, oh, it's just better off using my finger. So when you go to write, yes, it's it's the same thing. Writing with your finger is the same as this because this puffy tip here. All it does is, oops, simulates your fingertip. That's all it is, is it's trying to simulate the sponginess and the flexibility of a fingertip. So that's really all it's doing is you're moving the, you know, it's the same thing you holding your finger and doing this. Look, <laughs> it's the exact same thing. But okay, I, I get it. It's nice to hold in your hand, so it's totally fine. Now you do have some colors. In fact, you have eight of them. You got black, light black, Gray, or I should say dark gray, gray, light gray, even lighter gray, the lightest gray, and white. White is just your eraser or the absence of color. You do have some uh, stylus thicknesses, and why this is is because it doesn't have pressure sensitivity, because styluses like the um, uh, Wacom styluses always have 4,000 plus levels of sensitivity, or 4,096 to be exact, and this has none, whether you glaze it on the screen or press really hard it's going to do the same thing now this isn't a spec powerhouse so you'll notice when you draw lines it's only choosing the meat of the line initially so it's only gonna it's gonna look like that you know all kind of staggered until it renders so watch 
see it's like terrible and it's dotted but once you let go it's like okay now i have time to catch up now i can show you guys uh Wa woko harami 001 good morning india yes india you're only a couple hours behind us so perfect timing for you guys as well krishna how is the performance compared to ink pad color because i felt the ink pad color too laggy this is something I want to tell you guys right now. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee for this. Because it's it's very true. And this this needs to be said. It's honestly a good one. You know Tommy Lee Jones endorses this brand? Seriously, you can look it up. It's called Voss. The thing about Pocketbook is that they have never been a spec-driven company. They never toted that you know we have two gigs of ram we have this much processor we we do this that and the other thing they've never been like that because in their lineup they don't have any truly powerful devices all of their devices are for reading they're large screen readers in fact they make four a uh, three out of the four available large screen e-readers to date to face note is one of them but they're garbage sorry but they are pocketbook makes the ink pad x the ink pad 3 pro and um the ink pad light like this and these are all large screen dedicated e-book readers they're not tablets they're not note takers they're not tablets that lack the note taking experience like a dasung which is a google play driven massive powerhouse one of the fastest we've seen no this is for ebooks that's all it's for and that's what their entire line is that's the entire thing is for reading ebooks sketching is a little bit of a just a pleasantry oh i got my coffee yet. it it's not necessary absolutely at all the only reason we show note taking is because note taking has now become almost synonymous with ebook readers and if you don't believe me look at literally every manufacturer i mean you look at onyx you look at boy you you look at iReader, you look at remarkable you look at sony you look at fujitsu you look at mobiscribe you look at top joy rings the, the list goes on forever kobo even now has two note-taking devices have branched out into note-taking themselves so unfortunately we need to li live with the fact that e-readers large screen e-readers and e-notes are kind of one in the same almost because that's why large screen e-readers like this have become something of a no thought. No one makes large screen e-readers anymore. Nobody. You, you name one and you're like, oh, what about the Air 2? Yeah, but it's a note-taking tablet and it's $500. Oh, what about the Lumi? Well, again, $900. So it's like nobody makes large screen e-readers. Nobody. And that is something we need to see more of. We need to see large screen devices. That's why this is so popular with so much of the world because it's the only one this one in the ink pad x the ink pad x is actually bigger it's 10.3 anyways on to some next stuff we're going to look at an actual book because that's what this is all about oh and uh, going back to uh krishna no uh, not krishna where is it yeah krishna krishna th these aren't going to be fast so if you're going from a note air or you're going from like a boy up 10w and then you go to this and you're going oh man it's slow well yeah because it's not the same you know, I'm going to use my apples and oranges one I use every time. You go for an orange, and then you go to an apple, and you say, Oh, man, this apple's a terrible orange. Well, yeah, it's because it's not an orange. It's, it's an apple. This is completely different territory. Well, this one is, sorry, different territory. It's not completely different. They're both the ink. They're both large screen, etc. But this is why you're buying this. You're buying this for reading. Here's how you read. Actually, I can't remember if this has auto-rotate. Let's just see. Oh, it does. Oh, boom. Jeez, look at that. I mean, I knew that. I was like 63.5% sure it did that on its own. I, I honestly couldn't remember for the for the 100%. Uh, Tiger Blue, I hate to say it, but I'd rather use my iPad. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, you are in the majority of people saying, yeah, I'd rather use an iPad. But you can't, you can't compare an iPad with an e-reader. You can't do it. You can say you can, but you can't. This will last months in its state right now how much battery am i using zero if i turn wi-fi off i'm using no battery if i so much as turn my phone on and keep it off i'm using battery this will be dead in how much is standby time without anything on on a regular phone two days maybe so you can't compare them you cannot compare an ipad to this can you use your ipad to read books sure and you can play some games and send your email and all that stuff absolutely you can but it's not and it will never be an e-reader. What if you put one of those paper-like screen protectors? Give me a break. I'm not even going to start on that. I've had tons of questions about that. You see those ads rolling around Facebook right now where it's like you buy this 
30 or $40 screen protector you put over your iPad and it suddenly it feels like paper and everyone's like, whoa, it feels like paper. I'm so sorry, but that is a $1.97 matte screen protector. That's all that is. I We've been in the industry. We sell screen protectors. We do note taking. I guarantee that's all it is. It's like, oh, it feels really, feels really coarse. It's like, yeah, because that's the inherent nature of a matte screen protector is that it's coarse. It has a little... In uh, uh, differentiations in the height of all the little tiny peaks so that it cuts the light and doesn't splash back in your face and it diffuses it that's the whole reason so yeah it's not it's not anything special i'm terribly sorry but yeah richard wang big e-readers are fab for the visually impaired absolutely i'm actually 30 percent sure i can pinch and zoom to raise the text oh i can't oh no i can't oh yeah or no it will Okay, it does. Oh, yeah, okay. That's something that Pocketbook does really weird. Look, you're pinching and zooming as if it's an image. You know what I mean? And then it fills in the gap and it justifies. Oh, look, my name. Almost. There's an S on there. But, yeah, um, really, really weird way to do it. Uh, some people do, you know, scroll bars on the side. Some people do pinch and zoom and then a, a, a bar of text shows up here and it's like, how big do you want it, etc. But... This one does that um, weird kind of thing like this. See, like pinch and zooms, it cuts everything off, and then it's like, oh, I see what you're driving at. But yeah, that is fantastic. Look at that. In terms of ebook readers and like just reading a book, sunken screen and bezel, latest generation, large screen, aside from saying, well, you know, I can't check my Instagram. Well, that aside, you can't get much better than a big large screen e-reader. This is, this is good. Chris, now I wasn't referring to the performance and sketching, but for PDFs, pocketbook is the only option. I want a dedicated e-reader? You're correct. Um, even with like books and stuff, as you saw from one of our long presses, pocketbook, you know, you just got to be patient with them because they're for reading. You know, you want to do anything like you want to do that. It's just things take time. You see how that took like two and a half seconds? Well, that that shouldn't have. You know, and Tiger's going to chime in and say, I wouldn't do that on my iPad. It's like, yeah, because your iPad's refreshing 120 times a second and, you know, jittering the cones in your eyes. I'm not against LCD LED, of course. All my monitors and my phone and tablets, everything is LCD. You're never going to find a device that's as quick as LCD, except, you know what? We were very, very pleasantly surprised by that Onyx Mira. It's, it's over there, but really cool. Very, very fast. Like, surprisingly fast with 28 modes of speed combined. Uh, we're, uh, we're pretty surprised by that. We actually might be able to put it tabletop and um, maybe hook it up to like a laptop or something off camera, you know, with a wire and show that next time perhaps. We can maybe even do that. That would probably really be nice. Uh, Woco, is there a readout feature? Uh, I think so. I can't remember. <laughs> Come on, man. We have a lot of devices here. Uh, I don't think so. No, of course not. No, what am I saying? Because there's no audio. Uh, there is Bluetooth, I think. No, there isn't. This one doesn't have Bluetooth. That's right. Some of the devices they give you, I'm just, it's all coming back to me because we deal with like 50 devices at a time. Some of the devices when you buy Pocketbook, in the box, when it's packaged in the box like this, right, there's a box, at the bottom layer here, there's a little door and you pull out a dongle. And it's a headphone jack dongle that you put into the USB port. And then you can plug your um, uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack into it. This one does not have that. And it doesn't have Bluetooth, I think. I think this... No, this one doesn't have Bluetooth. No, it should say it. It shouldn't be under Wi-Fi. It should just say it. That's right. This one does not have Bluetooth. So, no, there is no read aloud. And if it was, it wouldn't be saying much because you couldn't hear it. Even if there was... Yeah, so unfortunately, yeah, that's not a possibility for all of y'all. Richard Wang, oh my god, pinch and zoom font change is absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. Um, I, okay, I mean, that's great that you think that. I just, I don't think that's very good. It's kind of weird. Like, I've had pinch and zooms where you zoom. Oh, I should get out of here first. Okay, you pinch and zoom, and you start seeing, like, it goes it goes in stages but this one it's almost like it's a pdf you see you see what i mean like it's look at it like i'm moving it around there's text over here i can't see so it's weird it's like a zoom level on a pdf image with text and then it it it, it reflows everything and it justifies it to fit with margins which is 
something I've never really seen before, honestly. No one ever kind of um, goes about it like this. But uh, yeah, so we have, uh, what do we got here? We got notes, so you can click on note here. And you can take all your notes and you can scribble. I'm, I'm sorry, but a lot of people are asking about scribble. Tons of people on the videos and comparisons and stuff always ask about scribble because, again, note takers have become one with e-paper e devices, it seems. You know, Supernote, I didn't even mention Supernote. Of course, Supernote is one of the leaders of uh, note taking. In fact, you go like that on a Supernote and that gets now highlighted when you make these little you know, brackets and you can do stars and clip art on super notes and stuff. It's really cool. It's really quite interesting. But um, yeah, you can take screenshots, you can erase, you can go back to the table of contents, you can exit out of your sketch app and all your stuff is still there. So uh, you can refer to your sketches too of everything you've written. I'll show you here by clicking on the little square here. Oh, that brings you back to it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry. I'm uh, off my game today. I think you can reference them as well. If you go to, I think if you go to somewhere, you'll have a list of all of your sketches. No. Oh, there it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. See, I got it. I got it. I got it. So you go here. What did I do? Yeah. Table contents. And I think you go to note. There you go. So it told, tells you how many times you did uh, pencils. Champlain. Is that the name of that type of pen? A Champlain? Cool. And, um, oh no, that's a highlight. I highlighted that. And where you used your pencils, etc. It's it's actually quite nice. It even time stamps when you used your pencil on the screen. It's, it's kind of cool. Dropping the top down, uh, we have our uh, front light. Bashar Asu said, when will you make a review of the Note 5? The reason we did not make a review of the Note 5 yet, it wasn't anything to do with Onyx or anything to do with us whatsoever. We've been rocking and rolling. We just finished the Mira. We got some new smartwatches that came in. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff. The reason we didn't do any Note 5 coverage yet is because the Note 5 has been heavily um, delayed. And out of the nine devices that Onyx released last year, one of them was delayed. There we go. And... Um, they weren't available so people were getting a little bit antsy and typically when we do a video um the comments start rolling and people are like you know oh i've been trying to order this you know where's this that and the other thing and it's just better to do a review when like you know things are just available it's ready because then you get things like you know um people whining about it like the uh and not in a negative way i'm just saying like in general like the watchy we did a review and an unboxing right away and there was a storm online of people like, where's my watchy? Where's the watchy? And we're just like, oh, geez. So, yeah, it is available now and we have been working on it. It's just not done yet, but it, um, it, it is in the works. So what do we got here? We got task manager. And this is going to be all the things that are open. So your scribble app. Yes, even though this is Linux, it still has things running in the background. It's not as intensive as a um, Android device. Ah, uh, that's good. That's honestly, you know what? If I'm doing a live like this, or I'm at, I'm at my desk and I can't go into the other office or into the other room and make a uh, you know a hot coffee or like a pod of Keurig or something like that, it's good to have like a little stash. I got a little stash of uh, coffee and snackables at my desk. Who doesn't? And um, yeah, you can actually close these. There you go. Yeah, it takes a long time. You can't ever close the library because that's ever operating but uh, you definitely can close some things browser did i think i should have wi-fi i don't see why i wouldn't have wi-fi oh oh i gotta sign in okay well here this is what it looks like someone signing into wi-fi i never remember my password there we go that's reading a very large device. Perfect. So um, this thing is not too heavy. It's honestly fairly light, but it's not too light. You know what I mean? Like, like when you get a device and it's got to have a good weight to it. You ever get a device and it's too light and you're like, where's my money going? It's true. You know, and lightweight electronics is, you know, future and it's technological advancements and all that stuff. But sometimes it's nice to have something with a little bit of heft to it. I, I think it... It's very nice to have something like this. You know, this is built really well. We're always surprised when device makers build something brand new. And that's sad to say, but it's absolutely true. The Oasis, uh, all the paper whites for the most part, have mostly the same body. The, paper, uh, the Oasis 2 and 3 had the exact same body. 
Um, Barnes and Noble did it with the simple touch, simple touch with glow light. Uh, Pocketbook does it a whole lot. Onyx does it a whole lot. iReader does it a whole lot. Everyone, it, it's economical to go into the bargain, the 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 big cardboard bin full of old shells. And like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, look at this. This is. This is the old shells we had. Let's throw a, a slightly upgraded processor in it and call it a new unit. And that's the way it is. And people honestly do that. Uh, yes, cat. I gotta read these names because I can't read them. Cab. No, Cadbury Lion. Cadbury Lion. Oh, Cadbury. Oh, nice. Yeah, Cadbury. Okay, so you have to be Canadian or from the UK because I don't think they have Cadbury in the states. No, they do. Yeah, because when I go down the States, my dad's like, hey, can you grab me a dairy milk? And that's Cadbury. Unless that has nothing to do with chocolate. Anyways, yeah. Uh, feels too light. Something that feels too light feels cheap because it's like, wow, I spent, you know, so much money on this smartphone. And it's like, you know, it's like air light. And mm, I get it. You know, as you make things out of aluminum and components uh, get technologically more advanced and they get lighter and maybe you don't need big capacitors anymore. You know what I mean? So uh, things change, but mm, got to have something a little bit... A little bit paperweighty, you know? Susie B, see a frame and no glass over the screen. Yeah, there's no glass over the screen at all. And this is a sunken screen in bezel, meaning, oh, right there, you have a little bit of a dip. There is still a protective layer on this. We've done teardowns. We know it's not just a raw e-ink screen because you'd be able to scratch with your fingernails and be lines on it. Uh, there are several layers in front of it, but there's no gigantic layer on top. And you know what? In fact, this actually doesn't have a um, Wacom layer and then a glass layer and then an additional screen protector. So you have two to three layers less on this, which is why pocketbook devices typically look a little bit more crisp. And if you don't believe us, you can look at the Onyx Nova 3 color, which is using a 7.8 screen and the Inkpad 3, Inkpad color, it's not the Inkpad 3 color, Inkpad color, and the ink pad color looks better because it doesn't have any more stuff in front. So, yeah. Uh, Cadbury Lions says American. I just like Cadbury chocolates and Lions. Okay, so, they, yeah, they do have... What am I thinking of that they only have in Canada? Is that Nestle? No, they have Nestle down in the States, right? General Mills? No, General Mills makes uh, Cheerios. They got that everywhere. I can't remember which one they have in... Uh, Canadian, Ca Canadian... Canada has a chocolate. Mars? No, Mars is everywhere. Mars Corporation? I don't know. Uh, if you guys know, uh, no, say it in the chat. I can't remember. Something's bothering me now. Which one do we have? Mm, I can't remember. Yeah, so back to the show here. Because you guys aren't asking any questions about the device, so I can't. I gotta fill the show with yammerings. All right, let's look at a PDF as for uh, Krishna's comment saying that PDF experience slash overall performance is not as good. And I don't doubt it because it's taken quite a bit of time to even show up all right so you do have the ability to pinch and zoom and it's not very fast and there's no um mini map either they actually don't give you a mini map so unfortunately it is going to be just the way it looks like this and you know you can you can do some other things though you can change the overall settings of everything you can go here and go to settings. You should have some screen. There you go. So you can do, oh, pardon me one moment. Yes, uh, you do have the ability to um, go to single page and you can do ever scrolling as well. So you can go here to scroll mode and this is actually going to fit to width and you can scroll infinitely. So you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it's kind of like, Endless mode. And it's really just the exact same thing because it still needs to refresh every page and you haven't really changed anything except the way you're actually moving it. Uh, Hack Demicus said, can you send it with Wi-Fi? Can you send what with Wi-Fi? I'm not sure to what you are referring. Um, if you can send... Oh, you mean like the voice to what do you call um text-to-speech unfortunately uh we have tried connecting like wi-fi uh headphones and stuff like that and it, it just simply doesn't work so you, un unfortunately you can't do that cornelius can't say i've seen you around recently cornelius uh yes it's great to see you live again is there any chance we'll ever see the old live streams again with ink news uh no cornelius we've stopped doing that the reason we've stopped doing the weekly um 
uh, lives is because we've lost a ton of subscribers doing that. I don't know why. Maybe you guys just don't like seeing us. But that frequently when um, we were doing the weekly lives, um, it, it wasn't really good for subscribers because it actually cut a ton of people leaving. Like every video we did when we looked at the analytics, it was like minus three people, minus four people every single time. So um, there was no way we could keep doing that. Uh, we unfortunately just kind of keep with the live streams of the live showcases and we do the occasional once a month for the, um, what do you call it? Like the monthly wrap up between Michael and myself, but weekly, no, we can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, uh, Cabaret line. I recently found your channel. It's been helping me a lot. I was, I researched various e-readers. In fact, I researched the Cobalt Libra tube. I'm interested in a tablet. I'm curious how the pocketbook compares in your, in your opinion to the books air Two. So again, Cadbury, I, th I think we, we touched on this a little bit um, ago. If you want a large screen e-reader, Pocketbook is your only go-to. Unfortunately, no one else makes large screen e-readers. But you can get large screen note takers, but they're usually anywhere from twice the price to a lot more. Oh, this is rotating. Um... They're way more money because they have Wacom layers. They typically have like a bunch of RAM, a bunch of storage. Pocketbook is just for e-readers. So if you're looking for an e-reader, you can't go wrong with Pocketbook. If you're looking for an e-reader, you can't go wrong with anybody because they all do it and they all do it well. In fact, note takers will do reading better than Pocketbook, but you're paying more money. You're paying, a, you're paying way more money. So yeah, hack... Uh, Demicus, for example, or other complex PDFs. Oh, can you send it with Wi-Fi? You mean like after you edit a complex PDF, can you send it? Uh, this thing's not even working right now. I don't think there's any send options on here because that's everything on here. Yeah. Now that I'm looking at it. Um, no, I don't think you can send... You might be able to go here and long press on a text object. Nope, you can't, uh, can't do that. No, you can't send pdfs because those are all the options and if i click here am i even just able to send that open with is open with a wi-fi send no no you can't send um the the thing about more e-readers uh rather than uh what do you call um android tablets with e-paper screens is that they have less options they have you know they don't have uh, screen mirroring and they don't have the ability to like, you know, send with Gmail and stuff like that. They just, they don't have that. So unfortunately this, ha this is very lacking when it comes to options um, in that regard is that you can't really take it, you know, to a customizable level. Uh, this one you have sent to pocketbook, but I think that's just pocketbook services in general. Yeah. Send books and email. That's right. That's just books. Yeah, I'm trying to think if you can send PDFs. I'm not sure you can. I'm not going to create an account right now. That's going to have to be something we'll have to get back to you on because I'm honestly not sure about that. Uh, we try to do these live showcases and we're pretty knowledgeable, but when it comes to those questions that really hang us up, it's hard because... um. You know, where our minds always split on a million different things every single day. So, uh, yeah, we try to do the best we can on that. But you can message us after the fact. We can definitely look into that for you. Stephen Prosser, I have to leave for a minute. I apologize. This is covered already. But what kind of ebook libraries can you access on Pocketbook? You can access the store, Stephen. You can't access anything else. Oh, wait. I think you have Overdrive. You have Overdrive? You press the home button. I keep forgetting there's a home button. Apps. They don't have Overdrive. No, they don't. Uh, yeah, so you get, uh, unfortunately, like with a Tolino, you get 11, I can't hear. You get 11 bookstores, and on Amazon and Kobo, you get millions of books. You only get the pocketbook store on here, so that's what it's going to look like. This is a pocketbook device, first and foremost, and only, unfortunately, you're only going to be able to access this. Um, is it the best bookstore in the world? No. Is it the worst? No. Onyx probably has the worst bookstore in the world. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it's, it's, it's true. You go to their bookstore and it's like Alice in Wonderland, a Christmas Carol. And it's like, oh, these are things I could download off Project Gutenberg. And it's like, okay, well, thanks. But Pocket Book does have a little bit more going for them. You can go new releases. You see what they have there. If it loads. 
It's very slow. This is a very slow unit, and that's something that just needs to be out in the open. You're not buying this to be, you know, a super tech powerhouse. You will notice that it goes into an A2 mode for a little bit. Right there, that is A2 mode. That's the definition of it, is that you see the lines right here. They've completely disintegrated. The battery symbol has become gray, and when you let go, everything renders, and now it's full resolution. Do you have a toggle for A2 mode? Unfortunately, no. This device does not have a system-wide A2 mode, so there's no way to actually utilize it to that extent. But you do have glow light. The blue is quite blue. Yes, it's, it's quite blue. And the orange... Is that max? I mean, it's daytime here, granted. So, oh no, I gotta... Okay, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Thank gosh. I was like, whoa, that's terrible. Okay, the... The top is the brightness, and this is the color temperature. So left would be blue. This would be um, more hot. And light is measured by Kelvin, which is heat. So this would be a... Uh, actually, we know it would be the opposite, because the lower the number, the warmer the light. So this is a lower degree of Kelvin, and this is a higher one. Because like a 8,000, 10,000 would be a blue, and this would be more of like a four to 6,000 kind of thing. But anyways, you can put in the middle. I, I always like to find it right around there you get this nice stone with a little bit of orange that cuts the light that's that's the way I, I usually like to do it maybe lower that a little bit you do have auto brightness but it's not based on sensors because this doesn't have any light sensors it's based on the time of day what is the battery like and how much does this cost it is oh cornelius it is 280 bobos uh usd so you can go ahead and um get the one of the the only and the best large screen e-readers come from pocketbook and that's really what they have going for them right now they don't do note taking uh they do this scribble thing you know they don't necessarily have anything in their line that makes them different from anywhere else because for the most part their devices are underwhelming you know you have six inches that are just a dime a dozen five different devices in their lineup that are all six inch touch lux basic lux basic touch hd aqua and they're all just like the exact same thing this sets them apart. Things like the InkPad X, the InkPad Color, the InkPad Lite. The InkPad series, honestly, is one of the coolest series because it's so varied and it looks so good. Thomas, or Tomas, if you're from Germany, can I get books by sideloading? Absolutely. You don't have to buy books. You just click the home button, you sideload books. We just sideloaded all these in. Boom, done. Read books. You can absolutely do that. I think I missed uh, Tyrone Johnson did a heart. Thank you very much. Uh, much, much love there, Tyrone. Hackademicus, excuse me. I'm really interested in this device. Is it possible to send PDFs, DJVU, and other files through USB? Uh, PDFs, absolutely. DJVU, I am not sure. And how to deal with complex PDFs, two layers, image and text. That... Uh, might be a little bit out of its expertise. Things like the Fujitsu can have interactable PDFs. So if like something here is like going to create a drop down or like expand into something on a PDF, the Fujitsu will actually do that. But unfortunately, this one doesn't. Although I believe in certain circumstances, operations with text are not available, but there's something you can do to make that available. I remember that you can, it might be deleting all of the scribbles on the page because much like supernote you can't interact with the text if you've scribbled on the screen so unfortunately that's not something you can do um yeah pdfs are very simple with these units you actually can't do much outside of just reading them uh to a lesser extent some reflow options it's very much just just you you read them and you view them well why did that pull focus okay yeah so unfortunately, that's really the only way to do it. Uh, Cornelius, so if this is the only e-reader and not note taker, why is it called the Pocketbook Ink Pad? Well, because it's a it's a pad, and you know it it takes ink to write characters that show up on the. I don't know. No, you. That's a very good uh, point. In fact, that's an extremely good point. The word ink pad should most definitely be reserved for a, a fairly note-taking centric experience don't you think i mean to their credit they do have a sketch app i mean they do and you can take notes on nearly anything uh, again if you're just joining us the stylus is not required you cannot use wacom styli or stylus is on here and when you scribble you can just use your finger because it's just a capacitive experience 
Yeah, that's a very good point, how they think about it. Wow, you've really broken pocketbook. Yeah, it's called the ink pad. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why they call it ink pad. None of their devices has ever had any note-taking experiences. Except, except, if you think about it, the ink pad color was the first color e-ink note-taker. Because it had a scribble app. And the Onyx Book Nova 3 came out after. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, it did. Because the ink pad... No, the pocketbook color. Pocketbook color did it first because they came out after the iReader C6. That's right. Anyways, that's not important. Veritas Locos, 150 PPI and 300 PPI ink pad 3, 740 model. Are you saying this has 150 PPI? I'm actually not sure what the PPI is. I can't be expected to know 1,000 different devices and all of their PPIs. But you very well might be correct. Let's go over and check it out. I'll check this out while talking, whilst talking to you guys. You know, I honestly don't know the difference between while and whilst. I, whilst, I can't remember. I can use it. It's kind of like when someone asks you, why do you say something like that? And then you can't break it down for them, but you just say it because you're a native speaker. But yeah. I'm pretty sure this is 300 PPI. Wait, I think it says if you turn the device off. Because if you turn the device off, it like it has the home screen. Yeah, if you power it off, I think it'll say it. Watch. Oh, it doesn't. It just says 9.7 inch glare free screen. How many PPI is this? 150 PPI. Yeah, Veritas Locus is correct. That's weird. Shouldn't be that low. I know that for some reason, I mean, I'm not a mathematician or a technician, but the larger you make your screen typically in the e-reader world, the lower the PPI gets. For example, sometimes when you make a screen bigger, you get 212 PPI, whereas the smaller is 300 PPI. But you also have devices that are just as large with 300 PPI. Therefore, it's super dense. So you're like, it must be a manufacturing thing that the density is just harder to achieve when it's a larger screen. I'm not really sure, but yeah. Uh... Cadbury line you say whilst while you're in a suit that is it that is the that is that that is on it, that's in a dictionary it actually says that when you open a dictionary it says when it's whilst it says one dot while you're in a suit that's true Cornelius aren't you fluent in any other languages uh yes Japanese which is why my mind think like thinks like that you know when I ask someone to break something down for me in Japanese they say it to me and I'm like well why don't you say this and they're like Oh, yeah, I don't know. And same thing with me in English, you know? Why is English so difficult? And why do we say things the way we do? But just the way it is. So do you all have any other questions on this? Because I've just went through the entire um, uh, video comments, the ones we've pulled, the ones that got pulled for us for this live, um, and said these are the ones, you know, most people are asking. Note-taking, glow light, um, reading experience. So, yeah, if you guys have any other questions... Now would be the time. Um, apps. Oh, browser. I guess yeah, that's right. I was gonna show the browser, and then it asked us to sign into, um, asked us to sign into Wi-Fi. So let's show you guys the browser. Obri, Obri, I remember is something that a lot of European companies and countries use. I think. So if we go here and we go to Good E Reader and click Okie Dokie, Crypto Inu. Oh, cool. It's like a crypto dog. Oh, and your display picture is a dog. Okay, nice. Does the Kobo and Kindle have text to speech? I want to hear them and compare since that's my favorite feature. Crypto, we're not doing Kindle, okay? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do that potentially another day. But we did Kindle and Kobo already. Uh, they do have text to speech. Um, and in fact, Kindle has a little secret text-to-speech. If you turn on assisted uh, for the uh, vis visually impaired, you can tap on the screen and it says things out loud for you. That'll do text-to-speech on anything, side-loaded or not. Cadbury Line, you may have covered this. I came in late. How would you say the contrast is? Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, and why it's so good is because it has several less layers in front of the actual screen and the viewable surface. If you see our teardown, you'll know that the actual screen EPD itself has a 
thick layer of plastic baked onto it from factory. That's step one. And then they do a protective layer, and then they do a color array filter, and then they do a glow light layer. Yes, the glow light is actually its own layer because the light has to shine into it and, and, sh and oops, <laughs> I just broke the e-reader, and disperse. So there's a ton of layers in between your actual e-ink panel and what you see. So by this being a sunken screen, this not having a Wacom layer, not having a glass layer on top with a protective screen protector on top of the glass layer and no color array filter, it looks great. It honestly does. It looks fantastic. Oh yeah, did you see this? Asus unveils a foldable OLED tablet ZenBook 17. I didn't even know they had 17 ZenBooks. Their phone is only, I have the ZenFone 5Z and they're already up to seven of those. Holy schmoly, 17 ZenBooks? I'm sure it's not in that order, but they just probably called it that. Yeah, there's a lot going on at CES 2022. Uh, we were going to go, but we didn't go because of the whole viral situation. It's just, it's not worth a little bit of news to potentially, you know, trouble things like that and just, you know, add to the problem, basically. If you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem, something like that. Uh, Cornelii, Crypto Inu. Oh, you're talking to him. Okay, perfect. Okay, that makes sense. Sunken screen, fewer layers, thus better contrast. Yeah, no, for sure. Honestly, if you look at the ink pad color and you look at the Nova 3 color, the ink pad color looks way better. It just it just does. It looks way better. You, you, you're not going to be able to d refute that because when you have your naked eyes on the screen in normal modes, because the Nova has f uh, four modes, uh, that pocketbook looks better. So typically, pound for pound, screen size for screen size, and PPI, PPI, respectively, because obviously uh, Veritas just pointed out that this had a buck fifty, which is pretty low, actually. It does, the pocketbooks typically will look better. That's just like the, the general rule, general rule. So, yeah, I, I would have really liked to see on this an A2 mode, but an A2 mode you can turn on like a Bokeen. Like a Bokeen is a, is a, is a e-reader centric brand, but it, it, it has A2 mode that you can toggle. See, right now I am in A2 mode. That's A2 mode right here. It's really fluid. It's very accurate. Image is heavily dissolved. And when you let go, zoom, boom, it's now rendered. But now I'm not in A2 mode. I'm in like, you know, quality mode or normal mode or picture mode, whatever you call it. Everyone calls it something different. Um, in fact, the Mira changed the names of the modes compared to the devices that they make. So Onyx doesn't call... X mode, speed mode, A2 mode, they call it like slideshow mode, text mode, picture mode, and normal, and then they have a slider of seven additional settings for each setting. It's crazy. You know what? Yeah, we're probably going to show the mirror next week. We'll put it on the, the vote, and people will probably vote it. Man, you guys are not giving the high sense a chance, are you? We really want to show the high sense, but we kind of just don't want to show it. We want to give you guys the... The, the the ability to choose what you want and we get like anywhere from three to six hundred people voting and um i think the pocketbook won today oh my gosh i didn't even check i'm pretty sure i know we're doing it and it's too late okay it did win okay pocketbook got 45 44 percent out of 316 votes and the high sense was 27 percent yeah so i really want to show the high sense it's really cool. I think it's an underrated unit, honestly. The Hisense Touch, it's it's underrated. It's really well built. Anyways, we just wanted to, if you guys have any questions on this, please uh, say, go ahead. But yeah, wanted to touch on Steven's uh, comment because it's a very big upset to the e-reader industry and a terrible blow to DES technology because DES color technology, which is the color technology e-ink, e-paper that um, Reinkstone and Topjoy are using, great technology real verified legitimate tech and unfortunately it is potentially forever stained by this whole um we would group trilogy trifecta of just negativity top joy yes they've announced all oh, the, the 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 what do you call it? the release date's going to be pushed back to march now I, <laughs> WeWoods raised over $2 million across four platforms of crowdfunding in two years, or through two and a half years now, since the, um, uh, the e Whiskey EE right. And not nothing has been sent. They have sent some things. They sent reviewers like us our copies of the devices themselves. We have spoken to 
uh, Wei Feng in China, uh, the, the guys who actually make the DES screens. And uh, we have good displays, no affiliation um, with them, but they are a vendor on our website too. We sell the displays on our site. So the display technology is fine. It's totally legitimate and it's real. Yes, but this whole Top Joy thing is making everybody upset. It's making us upset. They've gone radio silence with us. We've, we've asked them, hey, hey guys, you got updates? Hello? Is that email sent? Like, we're just, we can't communicate with them anymore. Reading Stone as well. Reading Stone dropped off a long time ago. And it's funny, after they dropped off, until now, they've started other camp, uh, uh, crowdfunding campaigns. Um, Reading Stone did Campfire JP, which is Japan only. Um, crowdfunding and they got like another seventy thousand uh, dollars. Top Joy did uh, green funding, which is another crowdfunding outside of um, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and they got another quarter million. So it's like, when's enough going to be enough for you guys to just release something? And we know the device is ready. They got retail packaging. It's been tooled. Tooled means it has all the, the cutouts for everything. You know, the USB cable all, uh, port. Uh, the Ring Stone is actually quite beautiful. The Ring Stone is made very well. It's well packaged. Looks great. Technology's real. Device is real. I'm not going to say anything, but yeah, that's what we're sitting at. So, Steven, yes, they've pushed it till March. Will they push it again? Yeah, they will. That's they will. <laughs> they can't give us any uh, peace of mind because this is the third time they've done this over five cr uh, crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, gonna get to a couple more questions here. Uh, would you recommend this e-reader instead of the Inkpad X, Luca? Luca. Luca. Inkpad X is more money. I'm actually looking up how much it is. I can't remember. Inkpad X is great. It's a half an inch bigger, right? Yeah. Oh, it's 400 bucks. So you're actually spending 120 more dollars for a bigger screen and a little bit better of an experience when you look at it. It's not going to be night and day. You're not going to look at the Inkpad X and go, wow, this is great. And then you look at the uh, Inkpad Lite, ooh, garbage. You start resting your coffee cup on it. No, the Inkpad Lite is very good. In fact, it's one... This is actually one of the best like e-reading only devices, not e-ink. A lot of e-ink devices out there. I've never said anything is the best e-ink, but this is the this is one of the best e-readers out there because it's stable. Everything works, albeit as slow compared to a, a tablet, but it does work. It's very stable. It's very crisp. Pocketbook's been around for ten years. They've had physical stores pocketbook which is more than they could say with uh onyx and supernote and uh, even fujitsu fujitsu doesn't have official stores that they sell the quaderno they sell them at some places but pocketbook had stores pocketbook had kiosks in malls you're walking through a mall in seattle and you're like do 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 all sunglasses oh little roses preserved in a glass oh pocketbook yes they did we went down Back in the day when we were a basement operation, Mike and myself, we went down to Pocketbook in Seattle. It was just a two-hour drive. And um, they were there. Green writing, green, you know, everything green themed, right? It was cool. Uh, Steven and Cornelius, Hisense next week. I'm interested in Hisense. Yeah, that's cool. We'll put it up for a vote again. We'll see if uh, see if you guys like it. I Rack LSS. That's a cool name. Uh, that sounds like a gamer name, you know? Um, what about Remarkable 2? I mean, what about it? They've... In the eyes of an end consumer, they've destroyed themselves. Uh, Remarkable 2 moved into a paid subscription platform, but not a paid subscription platform where you, you get you know, you know get the device and you use it and then you pay the subscription. You get cotton candy delivered to your door. No, you get the device and you can't do anything with it virtually. You can't even do uh, handwriting, rec handwriting uh, conversion. And then you have to pay monthly on your credit card in order to use it oh they're giving you discounts and they, you know they'll give you no what well, that doesn't matter in the eyes of consumers to pay monthly for something for something very un un, un, un unamazing too something quite old at this point the remarkable too is not brand new it's really long in the tooth it doesn't have any apps and i'm not saying apps is the be all end all but it doesn't it has no function it has no function. I like a I like a distraction-free experience. Buy something else and then just turn off all the stuff. 
I'm, I swear to you, it's the same. From a marketing standpoint, you might see an Onyx and a Boyu and, a, and, a, and other devices that say, oh, these bells and whistles going to be blaring. And like, no, it's not going to be affecting you if you just turn everything off. You can get an Onyx, uninstall everything and have a blank slate and it's going to be better than Remarkable. We're not paid to say that. It's nothing like that, but it's, it's absolutely true. When you get a Remarkable, you don't even get a pen. You don't get a pen. That's like an eye reader move, just really bad. You got to get a pen. It's remarkable. You can't do anything else on it. At least with eye reader, you can browse the web and download apps and stuff. I'm not against remarkable. I'm against what the remarkable uh, big boys did to decide that a monthly subscription for services that it already had that they've taken away from you and then made you pay for. They're like, here's your unit. I'm going to grab all this stuff and put it right here. I am not going to give this to you until you pay me. Oh, did you pay me? Will you pay me with your visa? Oh, there you go. Have it back. That's the silly thing. Cotton candy delivered to your door. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, you can do that with shopping apps. You just say, go to Walmart and buy cotton candy and deliver it to my door. But, you know, a dedicated service for that. Do we need that? I don't know. I mean, there's popcorn stores. Uh, just to clarify, did you say you're doing a live stream with Michael once a month? Yes, Cornelius. Uh, we do a once a month with Michael and myself. We do a uh, monthly wrap up of everything that has transpired. Uh, I myself do a um, live showcase here because we have too many units and we give you guys the votes, p vote power. For the most part, we, we majority of the time we do polls. Unless something's like brand new we got to show you, we do polls. And uh, anywhere from 600 people to up to 1,000, I think we had one time, a vote on what you want to see out of a selection of four. We can't tell you everything. And we're trying to ease up on the Onyx stuff because just too much too much Onyx recently. And Onyx is just everywhere, it seems. You turn a corner, you're like, oh, Jesus, it's Onyx. Oh, no, it's Onyx Leaf. Oh, no, where'd you come from? Oh, Mira monitors, which is good. It's filling the the e-ink world and the e-paper world with more stuff, but... Got a lot of stuff. Stephen Prosser, owner Remarkable too, and I 100% agree with you. It's more brute. It's a. I think it was a more brutal move. Too many of their fan club are supporting this decision. Yeah, and you know what? If you want to support the decision to pay more on your visa statement every single month, go for it. But that's the reality. That's the reality is that you need to pay money to get stuff that they've taken away from you in order to utilize your device. So that's what's going on with them. It's true. Inkpad Light is a good device for texting and reading, not for PDFs with images, I think. Resolution and PPR are too low. Veritas, you said it. You are right. It is a very good e-reader, but when you want to do anything else on it, it's like sketching doesn't have Wacom. PDFs are kind of slow. The store is just pocketbook stuff. Yeah. yeah. I would use this device. You know what? It has an SD card, guys. And if, you, if, you're, if you're all sitting there right now watching this, you're like this, so... Almost nothing has an SD card anymore. I'm going to put my fingers together like this. Almost nothing has an SD card anymore. That's pretty amazing that it has one. I would slam just a hundred books on, on an SD card, launch it in there, and call it a day. You got yourself a, a very dependable, reliable, well-built, built from the ground up, modern, large-screen e-reader with USB-C and a glow light. That's all you need. If you want to play uh, Clash of Clans, you're going to have a tough time rooting and modding your pocketbook to do so. In that case, buy an Onyx. And I would say buy an Onyx or Boyu. You notice how I've been leaving Boyu out of the equation recently, and that's because stuff is going down in Boyu. They're not gone. They're coming back with a vengeance, but right now, uh, Boyu is on hiatus, and we'll leave it at that. If you guys have any other questions on this, we got two minutes left. It's a pocketbook. It's very devoid of features. We can't stretch this any longer than an hour. In fact, we've only probably shot the pocketbook for 20-something minutes. It's mostly just been us chatting away here. But um, we do appreciate you guys sticking by and sticking in this and asking questions. And, you know, you guys can always ask questions about anything. It doesn't have to be the, the, the showcase device. It's just... If you got for this, if you guys say jump, we'll jump. You know what I mean? We'll show you the unit as best we can because again, we know you can't walk into a Walmart and look at an iPhone 13 and then say, oh, a pocketbook ink pad light. No. I'm just gonna say I, I don't think this is an on display anywhere in the world. It might be on display in some super niche um European countries. 
But even in Japan, like, for example, when you look at the local devices like uh, Kobo Sage, it's like, that's huge. And it's owned by Rakuten. And Rakuten is like almost on par with Amazon in terms of online marketplaces in Japan. They have Rakuten stores. And like, I, I, I can't think of more than two places I've seen a Kobo Sage in real life. So Pocketbook doesn't stand a chance in that regard, which is kind of why we do this. If you guys want to ask us something as best we can, we'll answer it and we'll give you an unbridled look at it without any sort of cuts or edits or anything like that. And if a device looks like garbage, then you're just going to see it in its real form. Uh, you guys haven't asked questions in a couple minutes, so I think we're all wrapped up. Um, we really appreciate you guys always popping by. Uh, on a lesser popular device such as this, we only get about 30 people, but sometimes we get a hundo, and that's that's decent. Even if it's five people, we make a difference. Uh, you guys watch the VODs after this. If you guys ever want to refer to any of the stuff we've shown you, or just, you know, come on by and watch us stumble around with the device, you can absolutely do that. Oh, what do you think about Yink computer monitors? Veritas, head over to Goody Reader page right now. We just did a review of the Mira. The Mira's good. Mira's really good. If I can get... I think we just borrow someone's laptop from next door. Um, we got a bunch of desks and offices and stuff next door that we do all of our administrative stuff. Probably just get someone's that laptop, but it needs a laptop with an HDMI cable. And honestly, like, not a lot of... Devices have HDMI cables anymore. Mm. We'll try to do that next week. You know what? We might try to... I, I'll put the monitor on there after this. We'll we'll, we'll put up a poll. I'll tell Miki, to, uh, the, um, one of our employees there, to put a poll up on YouTube. And when... Or if it wins, then we'll think about finding an HDMI-enabled uh, computer and linking it to the Mira. And we'll put the Mira right here on my desktop right here. And hopefully we'll be able to show you the mirror. So yeah, thank you guys very much for checking out the Pocketbook Inkpad Lite. It's a very, very good large screen e-reader. And if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. We'll stay by the video for about 20 minutes after the fact. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, for, thank you guys. And welcome to 2022 with Goody Reader. And uh, we, just, we just reviewed a smartwatch. The guys were, I walked into the office and they're like, hey, we got a smartwatch. I'm like, is it e-ink? And they're like, no. And I'm like, do you have a script? And they're like, yep. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So I sat down with the guys and we did a video, but it's not e-ink, but it's still cool. And it's Xiaomi, 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 whatever. Jeez, I can say stuff you guys can't say. Come on. Uh, and Hackademi Hackademicus, last one. I received a mirror this week. It's flickering in a MacBook. Oh yeah. Big PSA, everybody. Um, Academicus, close your ears, doesn't work on Macs very well. Yeah. And no, you can't plug a Nintendo Switch into it. We tried. I have a Nintendo Switch at my desk. I'm not kidding. It's actually right here. See? I'm honest. <laughs> I have a Nintendo Switch and a secondary monitor, so when I, when I, when I want to do my thinking, I can think and be creative and play Smash. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Steven. Cadbury Leon. Uh, I think... Yeah, Queen Cats came by for like five minutes and then you bounced. Matthew, Krishna, nice to see you. Michael, you haven't said anything. I don't know if you're here. Mike, what the no donation, man? I want my $6.99. Gotta go get a donair after this. Come on. Anyways, thank you all so much. Appreciate it. You know what? We might show an e-ink watch next week. That's right. We had some people asking about the fossil. And Scoggin made a new watch. Okay, you know what? We'll do a poll after this. Gotta get to work. Goody rear shirt. Got my coffee. Watch me watch, watch me drink some coffee for a couple seconds because we got to end the live. Thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you. My mom didn't come by either. Should be good.